uh, first to make a decision to become a vitreoretinal surgeon, um, it's not easy. But I think I fell in love in the vitreoretinal surgery since my first contact with ophthalmology, which was um, some years ago in 2010. <laughs> um, it, I started my residency in Belgrade, in Serbia. And uh, at that time, I have started in the anterior segment. I spent some days, maybe one, one week on the anterior segment, and then they were missing uh, some students, someone uh, to help in the vitreoretinal surgery units. So they moved me. And then I spent, so my first contact actually was in the retina surgery unit where I spent four months. Uh, and uh, that was the, the, first, the first love, the love of the first sight. Uh, I think that it's lots of, a lot due to the good mentors, to the good colleagues who were very supportive and who always uh, understood uh, the beginners and how difficult can be actually the beginner steps. Um, and uh, so all the atmosphere of the unit was really particularly good. Uh, so even though the retina is considered as uh, one of the more difficult parts of, uh, of, the, of the eye or of the um, eye surgery, uh, it's thanks to these colleagues, to my mentors, that they uh, helped me de uh, decide this way. Um, then also it's the type of life that you have to be aware of if you decide to be a retinal surgeon as i think it's, it's the only branch of ophthalmology where you are having your own calls weekends and and weeks uh, all your life so that's not only when you're a young surgeon or when you're a trainee or something but it's really all your life that uh, the retinal surgeons are on calls and they always have to plan their life around and there is always some urgent retinal detachment that is coming just at the moment that you want to take out your white coat and and uh, leave to go home uh, that's the moment where patients normally arrive that are just urgent you can't plan always your your life and your day um, but again, th thanks to the good people around, this, this decision was, uh, was quite easy. So my first steps in, um, in retinal surgery I made in uh, Belgrade, in my University Hospital of Belgrade, Clinical Center of Serbia. Um, thanks to my uh, mentors, which was uh, Professor Ivan Stefanovic, and uh, currently to the, my colleagues in Belgrade, which is Dr. Igor Kovacevic, and Goran Demjanovic, Mladen Bila. So they all helped me uh, to do my first uh, steps. They were holding my hand in the first, uh, during the first uh, um, operations. Um, and the, so finally they, they helped me. They helped me. <laughs>I was lucky actually that um, during my uh, training uh, I had, as, as I said, as I mentioned, the good, uh, the good mentors. So after starting, doing my first steps of uh, surgery, of retinal surgery in uh, Belgrade, uh, I got the Swiss government scholarship and met great professors in Switzerland and Lausanne, Thomas Wolfensberger in the first place, who is my supervisor um, and head of the, currently head of the hospital in Lausanne and uh, he uh, uh, was very supportive to me and he was uh, also my, uh, together with the Professor Ivan Arsenijic, my mentor for the PhD thesis, that I had the chance to perform in a Zhilgon Eye Hospital in Lausanne as a joint, um, as the joint uh, PhD thesis between University of Lausanne and University of Belgrade. Uh, in that sense, I had the chance to really do the research in retinal detachment and uh, to uh, discover some maybe and hopefully new things that will help uh, re uh, development in many fields in uh, retina in the future. Uh, so basically, what I'm very excited about is exactly part of my PhD thesis, uh, that the retinal imaging and uh, all the artificial intelligence that is uh, now very popular and that is coming. And currently there are many projects that are linked uh, towards that. Um, so, as my study was about retinal detachments, and these patients uh, are usually um, working people. So, people that are not only young or only old, there are people who, are, um, who have to, to work and to earn their salary, to have their everyday life. And uh, retinal detachments is something, is the disease that uh, just happens suddenly. It can't really plan, it's a disease that takes months and then maybe it's, it will get worse. It just happens. 
and then you have to organize and rearrange all your life about that. Uh, so being blind in one eye or uh, having a bad visual acuity is really a problem. Uh, so I'm very excited about all the new um, findings about the photoreceptor uh, cell death, about the photoreceptor recovery, and about how actually um, some new achievements can help these patients uh, retain and regain again their good visual acuity. Uh, why is that? Because even if the macula is the part of uh, the retina, part of the eye for the uh, precise vision, so uh, even if the retinal detachment, the retinal detachment um, has uh, involved the macula, so it's the macula of detachment, uh, the regain after surgery of the good visual acuity uh, is not always good. Uh, depending on the duration of retinal attachment. So now if we can uh, work and better understand uh, what is happening with photoreceptors, are they really dead? Are they just uh, uh, bothered with not having enough oxygen? All these uh, new findings are very important for, uh, for, the, for these patients and to be applied. Uh, in that sense, uh, the discovery of the adaptive optics, uh, which is a new imaging technique that for the first time you can visualize really in vivo uh, these uh, retinal cells uh, and follow them uh, after surgery and how did they recover uh, was very much excited about because there is really now for the first time you can prove that uh, actually th there is something happening that they're either dying either their their density is much less in the operated eye than in the uh, fellow non-affected eye um, and all these new um, New, new, new findings will just uh, help um, help improve uh, their life. Also, many retinal diseases are also connected to the photoreceptor and other cell retinal cells, um, metabolism and life and changes. So, uh, really, this basic research are um, are the future, I think. And also with the artificial intelligence, again, with all the imaging techniques that human can't really uh, do it, manually, it's very difficult to to do uh, everything. So with uh, all this, the uh, analysis of the imaging that can be done automatically uh, and f followed by a human, uh, it will give answers to many, many questions that for now we don't have the answers.